John's with us. Well, I said we were going to take a sobering look, and it really mm -hmm. is sobering. Some of these temperatures. Oh, I mean, it's crazy stuff that's going on. And I, I actually spoke to uh, Tony and Jonathan for about half an hour because there is just so much to talk about. And remember, what we were talking about there is not things that have happened over the last 50 years. These are things that have happened in the last year there. Um, so it is incredible. Things are changing very quickly. This time last year, COP26 in Glasgow, of course, and there was lots of attention on the changing environment and what we can do to be, to be greener. Do you feel that there is the same level of interest now? Well, Rona, I always think we work in a newsroom. It's quite easy for us to get swept up in thinking that everybody's talking about what we are reporting on. Uh, certainly in, in recent years, there's been a big shift in attitudes uh, to climate change. But I think just now, uh, people are looking at their bank accounts. They're not as healthy as they once were. People are worried about what's going to happen this winter, how they're going to get through it. Uh, and whilst there has been a big shift and people are changing their ways, I think we're now at a point where it's probably fallen down in people's priorities uh, now, but it is something that we still need to have very high up uh, in our priority. Mm. You, you talked in your report there about some of the real extreme weathers mm -hmm. we've seen over the past year around the world, but what about the Scottish weather right now? Incredibly mild and yep. so much rain. I, I hung my washing outside last week. I'm, I've never done that in November before. Uh, well, I mean, I use the word crazy, bonkers, an awful lot in my forecast now. Uh, and, and partly I do that because it, it's it, the weather. I, I, I try and find other ways to describe the weather, but it does seem crazy. We've just had our wettest October in record in parts of Renfrewshire, the Western Isles, South Uist. Uh, it looks as if parts of the Western Isles might have their wettest November in record. Of course, we've got rain absolutely pouring down in the east of the country just now. Some eastern parts might have their wettest November in record. And of course, some spots had their warmest November night on record just the other week. Uh, something we are starting to see a lot more during the, the autumn and winter Nights. Yeah. You're running out of superlatives, aren't you? Know, stay, that's it. Stay with us. If you've us. got any more, email them to me. Yeah, <laughs> stay with us. Um, now, as we were saying, the two week COP27 climate conference in Egypt is nearing its end. The Scottish climate researcher and campaigner Laura Young has been there throughout and joins us now. Thanks uh, for joining us, Laura. Um, there was a lot of buzz, um, I felt, about COP26 last year. This year's conference in Egypt has had lots of heads of government present, campaigners, and negotiators. Has it had the same energy? It definitely hasn't. This year, the atmosphere has been a lot flatter. There have been struggles to get those representatives from world leaders to the table. And it definitely feels like we've had less commitments, less announcements and less action. And even looking back over the last 12 months, we've seen less climate action in general, both at home and abroad, which has really left us with a flat, slow and quite stagnant feeling conference over the last two weeks. Well, I mean, what did COP, COP27 hope to achieve? You know, what were the goals of this conference and how much progress has been made? One of the biggest topics coming into this conference was about loss and damage. And this term is a type of climate finance, money that needs to come from rich nations to climate vulnerable nations. And some good news is that we saw the first minister, Nicola Sturgeon, putting on five million pounds of extra funding to loss and damage. And she did that not just because it's the right thing to do, but actually because she came to COP and met with lots of representatives from around the world. One of the roles that I have here is being a Tier Fund ambassador and she met with some of my colleagues and um, one of my friends Fred from Kenya and heard stories and put that money on the table but what we haven't seen is the domino effect from other countries we've not seen new money pledged and not enough money pledged and that was the biggest theme coming into this COP was to get that money on the table and we are sitting on Thursday with only a couple of hours a couple of days left and we still haven't made that up. And why are, why are the developing countries reluctant to do this then, just because they don't have the money at the moment? Well, loss and damage finance is for rich nations to pay for the loss and damage to life. And even in those packages, we've seen how so many countries around the world are being impacted and have been impacted by climate change. And so it's important. But I think there's been a lot of distraction in the last year from many nations around the world with everything we've been going through, that this topic hasn't been top of the agenda. But it's so important that 
bigger nations like the UK more widely, the US and other really rich nations do help out and provide this vital fi yeah. finance for all of the communities who are suffering just now. And the head of the UN said in his opening statement to the conference that we are on a highway to climate hell with our foot in the accelerator. Is there anything that's happened this week that indicates that things are going to be slowed down? Well, actually, what's going to have to happen is we're going to have to speed the pace up. We've already heard rumours and probably expectations that this conference is going to overrun by one or probably two days. And so we're going to need progress to happen quickly, both in the negotiations here in Egypt for the text to be approved and actions and commitments to be made. But then we also need over the next 12 months and beyond more action to be put in place after a year where we really have not seen much change in terms of projections of global warming or bringing down of carbon emissions. OK, Laurie Young in Egypt, thank you very much indeed for joining us this evening. And Sean, you know, so many politicians, as Laura was mm -hmm. saying, that have, have gone to the, the conference, opinion formers, campaigners. But ultimately, we are all responsible, aren't we? Absolutely. And what I would say is economies go through their good and bad times, wars come and go. But the one thing that's going to be here through our whole lifetime, the one thing that's going to be consistent is climate change and we need to get behind it. Uh, I mean, we we potentially could end up with worse downturns in our economy. We could end up with worse wars in the future if we don't get behind climate change. So it's absolutely imperative that every single person gets behind it. But I think a lot of people think, well, what can I do that will make a, a, a difference? Because, you know, it's such a massive problem. And yeah. I think a lot of children suffer from anxiety about climate change. But I suppose every little bit helps and, and helps people's kind of frame of mind. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I had terrible anxiety when I was at primary school because back then it was all talk about the hole in the ozone layer. Uh, and we thought that the hole was going to get so big and we'd all get fried. Um, and, you know, that gave us terrible anxiety. But we were all able to make little changes. I mean, we changed the way, obviously, fridges were, the CFC gases, but that wasn't us on the ground. Uh, it was bigger organisations that made changes. So I think it's always about having tools to, at your disposal to help your own mental health. Yes, the small things that you do together can make dif big differences, but obviously it's governments that are going to have to drive a lot of the change that we're Absol going to have to see. Uh, absolutely, and I suppose COP27 will hopefully get lots of headlines when the negotiations finish on Monday, and that will put it all top of yeah. the agenda again. We'll have to leave it there, Sean, but thank, thank you very you. much indeed for joining us.